Men talk a killing time, but time's quickly killing them. Hey there, how you guys doing today? Thanks for joining me for another episode of Bitcoin and Coffee. I'll be your host, Eugene Forrest. So what are we looking at today with these crazy cryptocurrency markets? Well, I mean, we had a weekend that was a little different than the weekends that we've been seeing of like, I don't know, all of this year pretty much. There was no like pretty much 10% dip over the weekend. It's a big plus there. Stop scaring some people so much. Um, so let me see, what do we got? Well, we got a market cap that's knocking on the door of $400 billion. Uh, and I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. We're getting closer there to those all-time highs. We got about $22.4 billion traded in the last 24 hours. That's real nice. That's about average of lately. But we got that BTC dominance slipping a little bit as we've seen such you know growth out of the altcoins, especially this week, uh, coming in at 37.8%. Still not too bad. Uh, you know, I think Bitcoin will get there as we continue to see the slow, steady growth we're getting out of it. Right now, we're just not seeing too much growth though coming in at 8,900 pretty steady and flat line across the last 24 hours but we are still looking at 11 percent increase across the last 20 or across across the last seven days so I mean that's fantastic um so as I sit here and I'm looking down through the chart, it looks like we've had some decent growth out of a lot of these altcoins across the last week. I mean, we got Ethereum on the other side of $600. Um, as I keep saying, unless you're a major speculator or, or trader, uh, you know, a majority of your portfolio pretty much is either Bitcoin and Ethereum or Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, so, I mean, when it comes in at prices like $637, it's up 2%, which is a 25% increase across the entire week. You know, most people got a smile on their face and are feeling good about being invested in cryptocurrency and it strengthens their ideal of holding long term on this stuff uh, which is always a big plus in my book all right so let me see we got a ripple coming in at 87 cents it's down two percent right now but hey they're up 37 percent across the entire week uh, you know a lot of people are starting to come up with the the theory and concept and slogan of you know you hodl your Bitcoin and you invest in ripple to make the money um, you know whether or not this is going to be true I don't know but at the same time ripples not something I particularly invest in uh, but hey Hey, Bitcoin Cash, they're making the big moves this week. Um, you know, it seems like it's continuing to bring up the same old debate that's been raging for a while on whether or not BCH or BTC is the real Bitcoin and the big block debate and all of this other stuff. But I mean, we also have uh, BCH coming up with their fork, which is pretty much them trying to upgrade their protocol, you know, increasing the block size and adding smart contracts to it. Um, you know, it's a big step. It's something that we haven't seen really with uh, BTC, but we're still waiting for a lot of these second term solutions to onboard which is going to be how we add these things to the BTC network so I mean right now we're looking at a BTC price of 1,400 or I mean a BCH price of 1,400 uh, that's up 18% and we're looking at like an 84% growth across the entire week so I mean if you've been hodling your uh, BCH you've doing pretty good right about now. All right, so let me see, what do we got here? Well, we got Litecoin on the other side of $150 at 151. That's not up too much right now, almost a full percent, but hey, it's up 19% across the week. Uh, you know, the community behind Litecoin really helps make Litecoin what it is. Litecoin is definitely going to be here into the future. Those people, they hodl strong, they're very devoted to Litecoin, and I mean, just with how long it's been here and the way the community is, it, it really leads you to believe that, you know, Litecoin's not going anywhere and they really want these slow, steady growth. And it seems like they personally kind of keep a lot of the downward pressure on the price because they don't want everybody investing in it quite yet. They're waiting for cryptocurrency to take more of a mainstream, uh, you know, area in the world so that litecoin can go ahead and grow at that point in time uh so let me see what else we got we got steam and the steam back dollar coming in closer to parity at three dollars and 16 cents and three dollars and 27 cents that's up 2.6 percent and 2.3 percent and we're looking at like a 21 percent growth there on steam so i mean that's pretty decent right there uh you know as i'm always saying come on over to steam sign up collect that free cryptocurrency so what are we looking at here on news on bitcoin and coffee Okay, so like I was saying, uh, we got news all over the place, and I mean, I live here in America, you know, over in Florida, but you know, the Cowboys stayed out there, Wyoming, they've been having a rough time with Coinbase. Uh, it seems like Coinbase is, I mean, 
you love them and you hate them, right? I mean, they get everybody on board. They make it really convenient. Uh, you know, they were great during their time, and it really just seems like now a lot of people are coming up with the idea that somebody else needs to step up to the plate and try to take better control because uh, Coinbase keeps dropping the ball, and the people in Wyoming are feeling this a little bit. Uh, it seems like in 2015, money transmission laws require them to go ahead and shut down all the users' accounts in the state of Wyoming, even though some people had invested. Uh, there Therefore, they were unable to move their funds and everything, and they've been locked up in Coinbase since that time. And these people, you can go on to Reddit and see that they've been complaining about the loss of all of this money. Well, back in March, uh, Wyoming went ahead and passed some bills that were blockchain friendly blockchain business friendly. Even though Wyoming back in 2015 had stated, you know, that due to the difficulty and the cost that they weren't going to be able to comply with the money transmission laws, now it's, you know, simpler and easier. They're coming out and saying that they're looking into it and it shouldn't be too long. But once again, they're not giving specific deadlines or details behind what's happening, even though these people aren't able to access their cryptocurrency. And as we all know, cryptocurrency is moving and changing so fast that a day of not being able to have access to your cryptocurrency could potentially be a big loss. I mean, I feel for these people, but at the same time, I mean, this is one of those reasons that I am definitely always out there trying to push these hardware wallets. You know, I have affiliation links below, but I mean, I don't care where you go and get it. It's pretty much that you got to get a hardware wallet so that you are using modern technology to keep track and keep safe your modern currency. Because otherwise, if you let someone else do it, I mean, we see in the news all of the time. That's why I'm always here saying keep your ear to the ground because the news is changing. This currency is changing. The technology is constantly changing and you have to be able to, you know, make moves on the fly and be ready to do what needs to be done to keep your money safe. But leaving it in an exchange is, I mean, one of the worst things you can possibly do. I mean, unless you're a trader and I mean, that's how you go about making your money. But, you know, there's risk with trading and then there's risk with leaving it there. So, I mean, that's part of the risk of being the trader. All right, so let me see. What else do we got going on in the news? Well, we're looking at the Ethereum Improvement Protocol 999, and it's saying that they kind of want to help out those people that had the parity hack. That was the hack where the millions of dollars got locked up because the library was deleted because the novice that had no idea what he was doing coding found a small flaw that wasn't coded properly and pretty much deleted access to their multi-signature wallets. Um, the problem with this is that blockchains are supposed to be immutable. So changing the Ethereum protocol to be able to go back and fix this and add the library, I mean, but it's been done before. So, I mean, is it not really that big of a deal because the Ethereum is willing to go ahead and fix these mistakes because they're, you know, writing code on the fly? Or is this not necessarily going to happen because it's actually a small portion? I mean, even though it's millions of dollars, it's a small portion of the Ethereum network that was actually affected. So the whole network isn't really going to get behind it. I mean, we're going to have to wait and see how this does. But, I mean, it is in the news. So I thought I'd bring it to everyone's attention. All right. So let me see. What I find to be really exciting is, I mean, we got $99 million in Litecoin moved, I mean, for 40 cents. I mean, if you're rich, I don't know why you're not smiling from ear to ear right now thinking of all of the money you're going to save. I mean, they're always looking for ways to cut costs. I mean, this is definitely showing that cryptocurrency has taken a step forward as you are able to move that much money across borders seamlessly in minutes. For that kind of a fee, I mean, it's nothing. That is nothing in comparison. So, I mean, uh, the cryptocurrency future is extremely bright and Litecoin keeps paving the way and showing us how Bitcoin is going to be getting there. So as always, you guys, if you like everything that's going on here on Bitcoin and Coffee, I need you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there because these numbers are slowly trickling upwards. And that is a plus. We're getting closer to 5,000 subscribers on Steemit. That's amazing. Um, as always, there's tools, links, all that good stuff, uh, faucets, everything like that down there to help you guys you know, get going in these cryptocurrency markets. Uh, the best tool I got for you guys, though, is my email address. It's eugeneforce20 at gmail.com. Shoot me those emails. Let me know what you got going on. See if I can't help you out. Um, also, let me know what you're thinking. You know, and one of the big things I keep hearing about from people is that they're, you know, they're in a similar situation, Ryan, where you live a lot, like week to week to week, and there isn't a lot, you know, left over. You know, there are other ways. You got to get out there and find ways to earn cryptocurrency, too. You can't just sit on the sidelines and look at all of this stuff and watch the news and think, oh, I wish I could invest. I just don't have any extra money. You know, you're a bright person because you're in cryptocurrency. So if you can get out there and find a way to start earning cryptocurrency, I mean, it adds up. All right, you guys, remember to keep your Bitcoin safe.